You're listening to the Batuta Advocates Weekly News Wrap on Desert Rock FM 96.5. Welcome back to the Batuta Advocates Weekly Bulletin. My name is Clancy Overall. Thank you for tuning in. It's great to have you here. Be that through the wireless or through podcasting, if you know how to figure that out. I'm joined by uh, Errol Parker. How are you, Errol? Good, mate. It's good to just have uh, the two of us here this evening. It's, it's, uh, it's often a bit taxing having couple of the young fellas in here or of course Effie Bateman yeah well they you know they uh, they ask a lot of questions about the state of the world they haven't you know really lived these kids these millennials and they their, have not and no. their avocados but um it's good every now and then they we give them an early mark they head off to the pub and we finish up for the week so it's great to be here uh lots actually happened no not much actually uh not much has happened not much in the scheme of things not no. much in the scheme not much on paper has happened but you know culturally you know the news will be jam-packed for the next couple of weeks we're, we're talking yeah. about the passing of course of queen elizabeth ii anyone who can remember the passing of princess diana will remember that uh, we couldn't watch you know good news week or hey hey it's saturday for at least a month every night we were getting tributes and you know and then of course we had the funeral and then we had the analysis of the funeral and this is just how we live in this country because we are uh, part of the Commonwealth and we do worship this inbred family of doll bludgers from uh, you know the other side of the planet. Well, of course, this pales in comparison to when our king died uh, a few years ago, John Paul II, as we're both you know cut from the Burgundy cloth, Clancy. I well, think I you know you're saying this our is king that of... died earlier this year, the King of Spin. Where was his well? He's was no his pope. Welcome I mean, no, 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 no. Where he, was his VJ day? He was obviously a king, but we're talking about a pope here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the pope is higher than the king in terms of hierarchy. So I guess, you know, the absolute pope of spin, I'd say, would be uh, up there with, like, your muralies and your... The question I want to ask is, are you considered a sellout if you are a Catholic and you worship the royal family? Well, I think, you know, this particular royal family is is head of the Church of England. And the Mm. Church of England, um, if you, you know, even have a basic understanding of your Irish history, are the bad guys in this film. They're the ones that have caused all the trouble, and it's just us, you know, nice indentured Catholics that um, Mm. have to put up with them um, day in and day out. So I guess you could say that here this is almost like this is Bane dying in Batman. It is, it is. For, for a vast, uh, you know, majority of Australia's, you know, at least white Anglo population, or Anglo-Celtic, should I say. But I would like to, uh, I would like to ask and inquire. Tony Abbott is a very staunch monarchist and a very staunch Catholic. Now, unless he is the type of Catholic, and that's rare, that uh, kind of survived uh, the Reformation in England. Well, he is a cattle tick who was born in England. Yeah, well, he is from England, but I wonder. I, I, I doubt he's, he's from Irish heritage. He's come to this country as a foreigner. Yeah, but is he of he's Irish? Is he Irish Catholic heritage, or is he one of the rare British Catholic uh, English Catholics? He's British Catholic. It's as rare as they come. Yeah, I mean, it uh, he, I mean, explains a lot of his behaviour, I guess. You if know. you want to talk about identity politics, I mean, that man is a war in a body. Um, I don't envy him. He did actually write an article today for the Australian newspaper where he said that Queen Elizabeth's death will be the most monumental and perhaps uh, felt death of any living person in history. Which is interesting as a good Catholic, because I think Jesus would have something to say about that. Well, at the time, you know, I I think that Jesus didn't really know that the church was going to split in Germany during the Reformation. So I guess, I I think Tony Abbott is, 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 is very reactionary in that, you know, he likes to fight bushfires and he likes to pray to God. I think he did get a bit ahead of himself there because I think for me and you and Tony Abbott, the biggest death of the past, you know, 20 years and obviously the the century preceding that was John Paul II. Mm. But I, I I think we should uh, we kick should off move into on. this. We should yeah, digress. You know, we've been we'll, absolutely gibbering on for five minutes. So. We'll, start, we'll start here. Uh, uh, the first headline reads for the weekly Batuta Bulletin is Report Yas King, of course, in reference to our new... King Charles the Third, the Third, yeah, the Third. After enduring one of the most public and chaotic midlife crisis meltdowns in the late 1990s, the Queen's eldest son Charles has become the oldest king to assume the British throne. Well, he's got some big shoes to fill. I mean, Charles the Second was a 
bad motherfucker. Like, he came in at the death of uh, Cromwell, who was, you know, not very well regarded in Irish uh, Catholic circles. But in the United Kingdom and Commonwealth countries, including uh, this one that we're recording in, most have never known a male monarch. Yes, this news, however tragic, brings with it a great opportunity for a bit more male representation in colonialist leadership positions. And next up, the Australian Royal Mint has begun drafting new wingnut coins capable of fitting King Charles's ears. With the passing of Queen Elizabeth II overnight, an outpouring of mournful tributes are soon to be replaced by a landslide of logistics. Yes, firstly orchestrating the handover to the new King Charles, known as Operation London Bridge. Then, of course, there is the Queen's Funeral, a globally televised event that will rival the 2022 Birmingham Com Games for ratings, surely. And then, of course, the colonies like Australia must begin the long and arduous task of replacing Queen Elizabeth's face with King Charles. Yes, uh, be that in the CWA Hall or on the coins. Working with the Treasurer, the Mint have today begun drafting wingnut coins aimed at keeping the shape of Australia's coins as close to Queen Elizabeth's models as possible, just with two extra surfaces coming off the side to fit in the new King's binungs. The wingnut coins will likely enter circulation in early 2023, around the same time Prince Andrew is extradited to the Caribbean and sentenced to life in prison for crimes that he hasn't been charged with. And next up, Are You OK? Cupcakes in the break room solves a mental health crisis amongst staff on 14-hour days in toxic workplace. Yes, a law firm known for harbouring a toxic work environment has this week popped some cupcakes in the break room for Are You OK? Day, which is supposed to make up for the fact that most employees have had to give them a pep talk to head into work every day. Yes, taken to various social media platforms to post photos of the cupcakes and whatever employees agreed to fake a smile for them, Hunter Global was met with plenty of praise from clients and associates, earning a smashing 105 likes on LinkedIn. It's alleged that no one actually convened to the chat in the break room, seeing as though they were far too overworked to waste even 15 minutes for socialising, so the employees were instead seen glumly munching on the cupcakes at their desk throughout the day. Ah, oh, well, it's great. Everyone's looking after themselves and looking after their mates. That's what Are You OK Day is all about, and I'm glad that it has entered the corporate sector. Anyway, that's enough from us this week. Thank you for joining us. My name's Clancy Overall. And my name is Errol Parker. Hooray. Ciao.